My name is David Marler. I've been actively investigating the UFO subject for over 25 years. My first exposure to the UFO subject was way back in 1973. I was five years old and I had heard stories of UFOs being sighted in and around the town of Piedmont, Missouri, which is located in the southeast portion of the state. My father was born and raised there and we had relatives that lived there at the time. And in fact, uh, two witnesses to the events were my father's aunt and uncle. And so that was my first exposure to hearing about UFOs and hearing stories of people seeing strange things in the sky. In 1977, my sister and her husband had a very dramatic close encounter with a UFO that scared them tremendously. And so the UFO subject really became a lot closer to home as far as uh, something that really impacted me on a personal level. Uh, it wasn't until 1990 that I became actively involved in investigating and reading about the subject uh, very intently. Uh, in 1990, I was introduced to the Mutual UFO Network, or MUFON, and immediately became a member and worked my way up from field investigator all the way up to state director for Illinois. And during the several years I was Illinois state director, I had the opportunity of investigating a very dramatic UFO incident uh, just to the east of St. Louis, Missouri, near Scott Air Force Base. This involved the sighting of a large triangular UFO by multiple police officers whose credibility was beyond question. Uh, this incident uh, garnered a lot of local media attention and I was the lead investigator for MUFON at the time. Uh, as a result of my interest in that case, as well as similar cases that were occurring in Belgium just 10 years prior, uh, I decided to focus my research efforts for about 10 to 13 years on the subject of triangular UFOs, which eventually led to the publication of my book, Triangular UFOs, An Estimate of the Situation, where I did a systematic review and analysis of worldwide reports going back just not decades, but even centuries, finding incidents of a similar nature that had occurred in the late 1800s. My topic of discussion for the 2016 MUFON Symposium will be a departure from my usual work on triangular UFOs. I will be discussing the subject of flying saucers that were observed back in the year 1950 over a sleepy little town called Farmington, New Mexico. And this incident, although very dramatic in nature, is a case that, for the most part, was ignored or neglected by the UFO research community for decades. Uh, what makes this so unique and why I decided to focus on a case from 1950 was the simple fact that we had three days, three consecutive days, of daylight sightings of hundreds, estimated hundreds, of unidentified flying objects in the sky, and the eyewitnesses ranged anywhere from hundreds to a few thousand uh, as far as the ones that witnessed this event play out in the skies in broad daylight over Farmington, New Mexico. Uh, in addition to this, I was able to go through newspaper archives, declassified government documents, as well as resurrecting old investigative notes that have not seen the light of day since, 19, since the late 1950s into the 1960s. And so with all of this knowledge, I decided to combine it all and try to paint a clear picture of what transpired back in 1950. And in point of fact, the UFO activity that occurred over Farmington was just the tip of the iceberg when I started to find other cases from the southwest portion of the United States extending all the way down into Mexico. And I will be discussing this, we will be looking at patterns in the reports, and we will be examining this for the first time in decades since the incident occurred. And hopefully we'll be able to shed some light on this old yet very dramatic case. What makes the UFO subject important to me, and what defines the UFO subject as being of importance? As far as I'm concerned, the UFO subject is one of the greatest mysteries facing us today. Certainly, science has made great strides in other areas and have explained certain mysteries, but to me, the UFO subject remains ever elusive. Uh, what I find also interesting is the fact that you have credible people reporting incredible things. And the scientific community, for the most part, 
tends to laugh or scoff at the subject, yet those same scientists that laugh and scoff have never taken the time to do their due diligence and examine the data. And that's what I'm trying to do, examine the data without any preconceived notions or beliefs and let the data take it where it leads. And what I find is the skeptics and scientists that are out there make vast generalizations, generalizations with regard to human nature, generalizations with regard to physics, without having looked or examined or interviewed witnesses regarding any particular given case. And so I see the UFO subject being of interest intellectually, but I also see it as a field, as a, a, a subject of inquiry that demands credibility, that demands serious attention, that hitherto has not been given its due justice. And so in investigating the UFO subject, I hope to put together a sensible, logical, objective approach, examine the evidence, and see where it leads. And essentially, let the audience, let the general public make their decision based on that. But I would much rather arrive at a conclusion based on knowledge and education regarding a subject or a case rather than based on ignorance as some of the skeptics and mainstream scientists have done with regard to this subject. So I will let the audience make their own minds up what they think the UFO subject is. But my, my job, my goal in this field is to objectively, seriously, methodically analyze the data and let's try to see if we can arrive at some answers.